Ari Drafters. Going to be doing some of my early analysis on the 17 Iron Beta for Brothers War. And if you haven't seen these videos before, if you're new to the channel, first of all, thanks for coming along. Um, but also, I'll spend a little bit of time on the colour analysis. Not a huge amount. I don't think it's a huge amount to say. But then I'll also look at some information on which cards are over and underpicked based on a combination of the game in hand win rate and the average last seen at. And I'll do some um, transformations to the data just so we can get a good visualisation of that as well. So, talking about the, the colours, I'm going to be mainly talking about the two colour um, groups, groupings, two colour pairs, two colour groupings, because I think these are the most common way to play Brothers War. I think the way that I like to play it, if I can get the choice, is to go really deep in on one colour and then play in a couple of cards of a second and a couple of cards of a third colour, and I think that's a way you can do it, especially when you've got the artefacts which allow you to do it. Um, Monocolour looks like it's possible as well. I've lost to a couple of very good monocolour decks so far, and that is definitely something to watch out for, but I think where we're going to get the information from to start with is going to be uh, these two colour pairs. And I've done a little bit of something with the data, which I'll show you in a second, but it looks like Simic is fairly clearly the worst performer here, 53.0%. Um, uh, where average is 56.4 overall. Uh, that's below all of the two colours, so that's the baseline we're looking at here, really, in comparing it to. So 53 is not too far down. And the strongest was, um, I was just on this earlier, so we've got Boros here, red, white, which is 58.9, effectively 59%, which again is a little bit higher than that. If I put it in a bit of a table, so here it's just, you've got, so here you've got red, white is 58.9, and it's mimicked down here as well. But what this has allowed me to do is take an average of um, all of the white colour pairs, so we've got the four white colour pairs, white blue, white black, white red and white green and we can see that the average uh, win rate is 56.825 for that. Um, if we're looking at the blue based ones, so blue white, blue black, blue red, blue green, uh, it's 55.3, similar for black as well, 55.4, so they're kind of joint blue and uh, joint for the lower colours. Red 57.35 and then green is 55.85. And yeah, I think that is quite interesting to see. I think black I would have, wouldn't have expected to be that far down, but it is important to say that these aren't massively far apart. None of these are above 60% and you often see a colour pair or something, or even one of these colour pairs, you, you know, we've got 58.9 here. And often you will see a 60, 61% uh, colour pair, which is doing really well. And you'll see one which is doing really badly, which is in the very low 50s. But 53 isn't that low for green blue either. Um, and it might be the green blue likes to splash a little bit. It's not really the colour fixing archetype, but, uh, you know, you, you can maybe splash in that a little bit more. So maybe that's just not being played exactly how it should be but i think what this is saying overall is no color pair is off um white's looking quite good and i think all of the white color white base color pairs are quite aggressive um white green is the artifact thing uh, white reds obviously boris and go wide attack white black is mana value three or less and then white blue is soldiers and flying so they're all quite aggressive and i, I do feel like the, uh, the white color pairs are uh, sorry the aggressive deck are seem to be doing better than i expected and they, they keep getting better the more I save them and the more I play with them. So that's the colour pairs. We are also going to have a look at the which cards are over and under picked based on how they're winning. So game in hand win rate, this is the chance of or how the uh, let's try it again. It's the proportion of games that I won, the percentage of games that I won after drawing it or after seeing it in hand. So that could be either the open in hand or the drawn or you draw into it. Um, it's not the perfect score of how good a card is, but it is quite a good one. And, it, and if we're going to just take a quick snapshot, it's quite useful. We're also going to have a look at the average last seen at. This is a position where you'll see the card last on average in a draft. And that means that anything over it implies that it'll generally wheel. Uh, if it's got a very low number, so uh, Kayla's command here, 1.79. It's a rare, so that tends to go um, pretty, pretty early. So you'll not likely see that after uh, pick two or something like that. So, I've got that data here, um, and as I talk about the cards, it'll pop up just above my head here. But we have the cards at the top, so I've ranked the average last seen at uh, from, it'll be zero, uh, sorry, one to 297. And I've also done the same for the game in hand win rate, and then I've taken the difference between those. Um, 
So that's what we've got going on here and the difference is going to tell us. So the ones at the top of this list are the ones that are overpicked. Now, unsurprisingly, there are a lot of resin mythics at the top because people will take them higher because they want to build the collections and that's to be to totally to be expected. So these are cards which are getting picked really high. Um, so what I've done, and also in this analysis, I should probably point out that there's a number of cards which aren't included in the analysis as well because all of these cards don't have an average last seen at. Uh, sorry, they do have average last seen at. Um, you can see that here, but they don't have the game in hand win rate yet because there's not enough data. You can see some have only had this one here. Uh, so the Stone Brains only had seven games where it's been seen in hand because it's not a very good card. Uh, another one to point out, Mishra's Bauble. A couple of people have mentioned it already. Uh, Mishra's Bauble isn't in draft packs on Arena for some reason. I know it's not playable in Historic. Um, you can get it in drafts in paper and it is definitely playable in paper. So it's a bit of a shame we don't see it in the draft packs on Arena. I think it should be there, but that is my... Uh, opinion really but yeah I, th I think it should be in there um so these aren't included in, in, in the analysis so i've got the, everything here this spreadsheet's going to be on in the comments down below i'm going to put it on google uh, sheets and then you'll be able to have a look at it in a bit of a poke around yourself and what i've also got so i've taken all the rares and mythics out and that gives us something which to draft us as drafters it's going to be a lot more useful so i redid all the the rankings so these are all ranked based on just the commons and uncommons that we have in the analysis and I've got a couple up top here which are being overpicked. So these have a relatively low game in hand win rate. I think it was 191. So uh, this is the ranking out of 191. You've got Burnished Heart, which is, uh, and Swift Foot Boots as well. But Burnished Heart and Swift Foot Boots are both in the Retro Frame Artifacts. And Burnished Heart, I quite like it actually. I really like playing it with Corrupt. So you go get another couple of swamps out your deck. You can then Corrupt for a bunch of, uh, a bunch of damage and i found it quite good but its win rate isn't great it's 52.2 percent and you're really looking at around 55 percent or 56 percent for the average win rate of a 17 lands user so it tends to make um games a bit worse when uh, it's played it, it would seem you'd be better off with a different card in there and i can see that that's possibly because the format's looking like it's quite quick especially at this point and the granny decks where this is better in aren't going to be as you know, useful and they aren't going to like it as much. Swift Foot Boots, another one. I've drafted a couple of times. I don't think I've ever played it and I haven't really seen it do anything exciting. Uh, I thought it might be quite good with some of the big stuff. So you cast a big seven mana spell, you've got eight mana available, then you can equip the Swift Foot Boots to it. Um, but it's not really going that way. And there's some other bits and pieces up top as well. We've got Hulk and Metamorph, which I think is the blue prototype uncommon. Um, we've got Foundry Inspector, which is one I'm surprised at. <clears throat> And because I, I found this to be fairly good, it's a decent body. Three, two for three, it makes your artifacts cheaper. It might allow you to double spell either straight after it. So, you've got four mana, you cast this, and you can cast a two mana uh, artifact, which is quite good. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe the power stones are doing a lot of what this job that this would do anyway, or maybe just the three, two body isn't quite up to snuff. Uh, it is picked very highly, and I think these retroflame artifacts are picked particularly highly, even the uncommons, because uh, people see them and see it's might see them a bit like a rare and decide that they're going to get to pick them. Like very highly um and then yeah we've got a few other bits and pieces going on the bit that i find the most interesting though and the most useful is the underpicked cards because these are ones where people are going uh, below and one which is really underpicked you can see here the the different not that this score has a huge you can't really read too much in this score but you do have 18 points difference between the military discipline and the goblin blast runner but this goblin blast runner is uh by far and away at the bottom of this list and it's looking like it's doing quite well 59.7 percent game in hand win rate which is very good uh it's it's you know one of the best ones 16th best common run common according to game in hand win rate overall and it wheels it, it definitely wheels as well 9.04 so this is criminally underpicked right now according to data i've not seen it really so i don't know how it's going um we have i should have probably froze that top let's view and freeze panes there we go so we have the games in hand games played yeah it's not being played in a huge amount of decks probably because people are underestimating it but it is looking that the games is played and it's, it's making a big difference it's uh one mana one two minutes when you sacrifice something uh it gets plus oh, if you sacrifice something this turn it gets plus two plus oh so it's, it can be a 3-2. Uh, it can't go to 5-2 if you keep sacrificing stuff, but I think it still, it still seems quite decent. Uh, you can trigger with Evolving Wilds and things like that. You can trigger with 
um, a few other bits and pieces. So maybe, I don't know. I'm surprised it's as high as it is, but it is quite high and it's not really get being picked. So maybe that's something to look at a bit more. We've got military discipline, single mana white, uh, gives something plus one plus O oh, and first strike until end of turn. So it, it's an aura, which gives it plus one plus O oh forever. And it also gets first strike. So that's going to be pretty useful. Uh, Will and strikes another combat trick. And, you know, th these are dropping off fairly quickly, but you've got Will and Strike here, which combat trick plus two plus O, oh, first strike and trample, which is uh, quite a good combat trick, really. I, I didn't really pay much to attention to it early on, but it is potentially quite good. And I have seen it on the other side of the field, and I've felt that it's been quite good whenever it's been played. So I would, I, I definitely feel like I should be picking them up more highly. Uh, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, we've got a one up here. Evangel of Synthesis. Now, Evangel of Synthesis, it's got a very high game in hand win rate, and the average I've seen that is, is quite high as well, so it's going around quite a bit. But the reason for this is probably because of the gold card, and I say this every time I do this analysis, you, the gold card's going to be more likely to be down this end of the rankings because you'll pass them even though they're good cards because you can't play them in basically anything other than the, the two-color deck. And, you know, it is obviously quite a good card. I'm surprised it's quite as high as it was because I haven't really seen blue-black decks do much of anything yet, and I prefer some of the other um, signposts and commons, the, the two colour signposts and commons, but maybe I should give this another look. Another one which is at 60% is the scrap work mode. I've seen a lot of talk about this one. Um, a lot of people, I think it is the best uh, red common by game in hand win rate, and you can see it's 13th best, best common overall. This data is based on Saturday night, uh, Saturday the 19th of November. So I had a few days of uh, the data coming in for this, but yeah, that's, that's another really strong one. But uh, we've definitely got some power in the set. Let us know what you think. Is there anything which stands out really surprising to you around here? Uh, I think the colour mix here is, yeah, it's, it's fairly mixed. There's, there's no real standard colours which have been underpicked. Um, and I think at the top end there's going to be a lot of artefacts there as well. But yeah, what do you think? Do you, do you think this analysis is useful? Is there anything which is surprising you? Uh, is there anything you feel about the format in, in general at all? Let us know in the comments. And if you are new here and you do like the content, a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel is always appreciated. But thanks again. Catch you around. Bye.